Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 6, Part 1. In today's lesson we will be learning about price inflation. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. First of all, what is inflation? Inflation is a general and sustained rise in the level of prices of goods and services. For example, the prices of the vast majority of goods and services keep on rising. Some countries have experienced hyperinflation in the past, runaway inflation during which prices rise at phenomenal rates and money becomes almost worthless. But, how do we measure inflation? There are many millions of different goods and services exchanged in an economy, so most countries track the prices of a selection of goods and services to construct a price index. This selection of good, most often called a basket, is used to track inflation in a specific market or country, so that if the price of the basket of goods increases by 2% in a year, inflation can thus be said to be 2%. The goods in the basket are meant to be representative of the broader economy, and are adjusted periodically to account for changes in consumer habits. In year zero, the base year we, identify the basket of goods and services purchased by the typical family. Monitor the average price of each item in the basket at a sample of different retail outlets. Monitor how much the typical family spends on each item in the basket. Weight the average price of each item by the proportion of household expenditure spent on it. Add up all the weighted average prices. Set the total weighted average price of the basket equal to 100. From year one onwards we repeat the monitoring of household spending patterns and prices. Compare the total weighted average price of the basket to base year to calculate the change in the price index. This is the UK price inflation from 1960 through till 2011, showing the percentage annual change in the retail price index or RPI. Notice that in 1975 it was over 25%. Nowadays, it is a much more reasonable figure, with the value being under 4%. How do we calculate a consumer price index? In this example we have a number of different types of goods and services. These are, clothing and footwear which they spend 25% of their weekly expenditure. Household goods and services. That makes up 10%. Food, this is another 50%. Finally, travel, coming in at 15%. The average price of the goods are shown in the third column. To get the weighted average price for the fourth column, we multiply the percent of the category by the average price. If we add all the weighted prices together, we get the price of the basket. I know it may seem tricky, but work through a few examples and you will get it. Now, let's say that the price of the basket was $25 in the base year. If we follow the example below we see that annual inflation has been 8%. Not too bad, but could be better. It must be noted that, the basket of goods and services bought and the weights applied to each item in the basket may change from year to year as products and spending patterns change. Most countries compile a consumer price index, or CPI, or a retail price index, or PI, or both. The methodology used for each index series is the same, but the products they include and the types of consumer they cover can differ. As a result they can provide slightly different measures of inflation. Looking at the graph, CPI and RPI generally, somewhat track each other, but there are some subtle differences. The CPI is based on the HCIP, or Harmonized Consumer Index Prices, which measures inflation on internationally agreed standards throughout Europe. The RPI, or Retail Price Index, includes mortgage interest payments. Thus changes in the interest rates affect the RPI. If interest rates are cut, it will reduce mortgage interest payments. Thus the RPI will fall but not the CPI. 
The RPI also includes council tax and some other housing costs not included in the CPI. The CPI includes some financial services not included in the RPI. The CPI is based on a wider sample of the population for working out the individual weighting of different types of goods. What are the uses of these price indices? As an economic indicator, a consumer or retail price index is a widely used measure of price inflation and therefore a measure of changes in the cost of living. As a price deflator, rising prices reduce the purchasing power of wages, profits, pensions, savings, tax revenues, and a host of other economic variables of importance to different groups of people and decision makers. A price index is therefore used to calculate changes in their real values over time. For indexation, indexation involves increasing certain payments and values, such as state pensions and income tax thresholds, by the annual rate of increase in price inflation in order to keep their real value constant. What causes inflation? Economists today tend to agree that the main cause of inflation is too much money chasing too few goods. For example, if the money supply increases at a faster rate, than the aggregate supply of goods and services, then the general level of prices will rise. The money supply may expand to meet demand and cost pressures. There are two main causes of inflation that you need to remember. Demand pull and cost push inflation. A demand pull inflation is caused by aggregate demand rising faster than the aggregate supply of goods and services. A cost push inflation is caused by rising wages and other production costs. Firms will raise their prices to cover these additional costs. A rise in import prices may cause an imported inflation. Import prices may rise following a fall in the exchange rate of the importing country. So, what are the costs of inflation? Low and stable price inflation can be beneficial for an economy, it encourages consumers to buy goods and services sooner rather than later. And, it reduces the real cost of loan repayments. But high or rising inflation can be bad for an economy. Inflation erodes the value or purchasing power of money. People, especially those on low and fixed incomes, cannot buy as much as they did before with their incomes. Demand for many products will fall if real incomes continue to be squeezed. It increases the cost of production and reduces profit margins. It reduces the price competitiveness of exports. It creates economic uncertainty. Consumers, firms and governments will be uncertain about their future costs and the impact rising inflation could have on their incomes and revenues. Firms may cut their investment and consumers their spending. A government's worst nightmare is stagflation, an economic situation when unemployment and inflation are both high and rising. That brings us to the last lesson for today. What is deflation? Disinflation refers to a slowdown in the rate at which prices are rising in general. But, deflation involves a continuous decline in the general level of prices in an economy. So what's so bad about falling prices I hear you ask? Increasing supply, competition, productivity and technological advance are good things for an economy and consumers, and have reduced the prices of many products over time such as mobile phones, televisions, cars, holidays and clothing, in many countries. However, when falling product prices become widespread and prolonged due to a slump in aggregate demand, the result is malign deflation. In addition, the real cost of borrowing and public spending rises. Firms cut investment and the government must cut spending or raise taxes. Eventually the economy goes into a deep recession as demand, output, the demand for labor, and incomes continue to fall. Many firms may go out of business because they are unable to make any profit no matter how much they cut their prices. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.